Hello everyone, this is uh, the bear back here again in video for the shot scope to tour videos and in this section we're going to split this into two parts and this is all going to be on, on advanced features and the first area we're going to be looking at is player notes. And this is a very important factor that I'm sure a lot of us who play regularly uh, know is very important when we're playing our opponents. Basically taking notes, spotting reads and then putting that information on a player so when you come across them again you can use that information to your advantage and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use shark scope to do this so that you can take advantage of your opponents so if we bring up good old eddie kadup here hang on eddie kadup and we'll use him as our uh, our guinea pig in this one here we go got his data here so we've got his data here he's played what, over 5,000 games here ability rating 78 doing rather nicely here at 16k so we you know we've got a lot of stats in front of us here but if we've played against him quite a bit and we want to put a note on this particular player the question we ask is how do we do that well it's so simple watch this put your mouse over so the bar highlighting there to a, a, like a very pale yellow right click add note up pops the box with the arrow in there so let's just say yeah uh, aggressive player aggressive player uh, likes to uh, three bet in a late position. Um, loves burgers, loves burgers, and addicted to basketball betting. <laughs> there we go. Save the note. And look, there it is, people. As simple as that. The note is there. You heart, you heart, you click it. You can actually edit the note. Uh, and if you want to get rid of the note, just look at this, look at that, click, highlight, delete, save, the note has gone. How user-friendly is that? Fantastic. So if you're thinking about it on a serious note here, especially when you're playing a lot of games, sit and goes, things like that, and you're coming across opponents on a regular basis, you will build up a read on them. You'll, you'll probably spot some trends that you think, right, I know he's capable of doing this. I know this is a floral weakness. By having those notes on that player, basically, you can, you know, when you're at the tables, you can refer to those notes very, very easily. And if you combine that information with the data that we're looking at here, for example, and remember, don't forget, like I showed you in the previous video at the right at the very beginning here, you can actually copy statistics, right, that are in front of you there, Paste that into, say, PokerStars notepad uh, that you get on the player uh, when you're at the table. And we'll combine that information with the note on the individual. You're laughing. You are miles ahead of the average player at the table because you've got all this data to hand. Now, the other benefit to mention about the notes factor here is it also helps you avoid opponents you don't want to play against. So you, you, you'll know you'll come across people at times, especially in the sit and goes, that you think, well, hang on a second, this is a reg. He's very strong. I really don't want to be jumping into his sit and go. So when you're using the tournament selector, you know, to, to table select for your sit and goes and stuff like that, you can look at that. Uh, you know, you can look look for those notes and say, right, there's a person I really want to avoid. So a very handy technique there, basically, to help you pick the event you want to play in and avoid the events where you've got strong players and you're not going to have really much of an edge. So if we go back to Eddie Kadub here, we want to look at another area here, which is called opponents. So I've just pulled up his sit and goes, and this really is a sit and go tool. Here it is here, okay? So if I actually click on this, and you'll see if I click the drop down box, there's various options here. So if we click, for example, on uh, Eddie's most frequent opponents, and we just click on that. It's pretty quick, as you can see there. And that'll tell me all the people that he's played the most games against. So he's got quite a few here. And when you hit 50 plus, you start getting some information on people. Tells me his profit here on, on the uh, right-hand side. And just so you know what that profit box is here, okay? If it's not a heads-up match, just so you know this, the profit shown against each player is the sum of the profit taken from that player in each tournament and excludes rake. Okay, for example, if a profit of 80 bucks was won in a nine player tournament, then a profit of 10 was made from each other player in that tournament. So the best way to sum it up here is on the right hand side, when it's like sit and goes, uh, it's, the profit is generally the average per game. However, if you're playing heads up, the profit on the right hand side, if it's just purely heads up you're playing against that person, it's the total profit. So if I move down here, we've got most frequent. If I look at the most profitable, who he's actually winning money against. So here we go. And here you can see now, look, he's only got one, but there's 58 bucks there. So it's quite clear these are all heads up matches um, that, he's, that he's won that against. And there's no real volume there. So it's not going to tell him a great deal. 
At the same time here, though, on the ones that he's lost, gives me a little bit here, so a little bit of knowledge here against Mutton. He's played 13, 17 against Mo Dangles. And the rest, not a lot of volume. But the good thing about this here, when you find people that you know you're struggling against, so, you know, once you've started playing, you know, you know 20, 30 times against an individual and you start cl clocking up losses, you think, well, hang on, why am I playing this person? This doesn't make sense. I've got a great tool, very sophisticated um, software with sharp scope. Let's use it to my advantage. Let me avoid these people. Now, if you're a heads-up player, very, very useful. You can identify somebody straight away. You've got notes on them, like I've shown you how to do that. And you can just just stay clear. There's no point if you're losing money to that person playing him. Same applies when you're searching for maybe nine or ten man sit and goes. If you're seeing regs in there and you can pick another event, so say that nine man's filled with say four or five good players that you've lost money to, you think, well, why why play that? I'm I'm rushing roulette. I'm, in fact, I'm almost giving you money away. So avoid that event. Find something else. And this just basically gives you an indication of who you're winning against and who you're losing against. And then obviously it's down to you to use your common sense and how you use that information. Next here we're going to talk about people is actually groups and you can see the tab here, here it is here and it's been revamped yet again by Sharpscope. Now I actually love this feature because it's exceptionally good for people who have got multiple accounts. So I'm going to give you two examples. One is me. So I'm going to share it under all networks first of all for The Bear. Now I have quite a few accounts as a lot of you know. I've been doing uh, videos on PokerTube for a long time. Uh, and there's various accounts here, and there's various spellings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell it under that, and there's various aliases with uh, different letters in it. So I do know, for example, that's one spelling of the bear across the networks. I think from what I'm looking at them, virtually all of them are my accounts. We're going to put another E in there, because I know there's an iPoker account with that spelling. Yep, there you go. And I know there's various other formats, but just for speed purposes, I'll just do this, okay? Because it's enough there to select with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put these in one group. So just click on the icon here at the bottom. See that groups don't have to select them at all. Just click groups, create new. And we'll just say a the bear one here. The bear, we'll say 21. There's all the items in question because they're actually in the field. I'm going to add all these. That's it there. I don't want it public. You can see it can, it can be viewed by anybody. But I am going to consolidate it. So I'll put it all into one. Apply that. And there you go, people. And that is it done. And now that that's done, all I want to do if I want to review this is go to groups here. And if I want to load mine, there is here, the Bear 21. I'll load it up. Give it a second. It's searching. There it is here. There's the player group. As you can see, the Bear 21. So it's combined all this stuff. If I actually put my little thing over it there, my mouse, it can see all the sections it's highlighted and put it together. And there you go. It shows that I am profit box. Is that? Exactly 6k. Well, there you go. 6k up. Ability rating 78. ROI 22.7 after 2.7k games. Not bad for a hobby player, huh? But you can see how effective that is and how useful that is when you're doing homework on yourself or somebody else. Now, a little note to point out as well, people. Uh, you've got the player group function here. It's actually in here. So when you're searching for player groups, say somebody gives you a name of a player group they've created, then you just select that on then and there, because obviously it won't be in your group section, it'll be somebody else's if you know what I'm saying. You select player group in the, the drop down box here, which is like third one down, type in the name, boom, and then you can search what they've created. Now, just to have a look at this, people, to point this out to yourself, this is the player group I've done here. Like I say, if I put my mouse over, you can see all the things I've, I've, I've um, all the sites I've put together here. Now, if you want to do an advanced search on the actual group, you can do this. So if you want to break stuff down, so let's say, for example, you want to look at events 20 bucks and down, right? This is the actual overall stats for all those uh, sites put together. So if I said 20 bucks and less, uh, we'll leave the entrance at the full lot and we'll uh, just go a search on that. Look at that, people. Shows you I'm up 7K on uh, 20 bucks, uh, which is actually uh, more than the 6K there. ROI 28.1 up from 22.6. So we can put other uh, factors in here. If we want to say types to exclude, so let's say we took out um, rebuy, shall we? One second. So we've got the rebuy here. So if we take out the re rebuys, exclusion, all right, hit search again. Do you see what I mean? So you can actually search your group with all the advanced filters and then do more homework on yourself or somebody else if you're looking at somebody else, if you know what I mean. There's a filter there for you. So it says there, if I take out my um, rebuy events, my profit's still uh, 3K, it's okay. But look, nearly 4K of my profit, just over 4K there, has come from rebuy events. Maybe I should be playing more rebuys. <laughs> 
So it just shows you uh, how you can use a player group and do all this, should we say, breakdown of it to, to look at specific sectors in it, whether it's certain types of games, um, whether it's turbos, rebuys, you name it. Now, there's another little trick I want to share with you here, which is really good. So watch this. I'm going to go to Bear again. This is uh, without any filters. This will bring up my main screen. There we go. That's me overall, yeah? Now, if I change from all gains to sit and goes, I'll get the breakdown of what my sit and goes are. There's the filter, yeah? If I then go scheduled and search again, there you go. So I've got scheduled, sit and go, and my overall stats. Now, if I go to advanced search and say, all right, let's, let's break it down a little bit more. So let's say we want to look at types to uh, include. So uh, and we'll just put this to all games, by the way. Change that. So we'll go types to uh, include. And we're going to look at this to say hold them. Yeah. So all games, hold them. Search that. The filter will pop up. Give it a second. There's the hold'em. If I then take that out, uncheck it, and then look at uh, Omaha. I don't think I've played a lot of Omaha, but we'll go high, low, shall we, and high on the tournament front. Search that. Okay, played 44. So there we go. And obviously, if you've got a bigger sample, and mine's reasonable, but it's not that much, to be honest. But if you've got a much bigger sample and you're playing various events, what you can do is break down some of the main things. So there, for example, I've got overall, set and go, scheduled, Omar, and, uh, sorry, Omar, high, low, and hold them. Let's just say we want to have that every time we look at our stats. Okay? So all you do is you go to groups. Here we go. Create new. Okay, I'm going to add all these people over. So here they are here. Just add all and we'll call this say uh, The bear 44, okay, we'll take the public off. We don't want to consolidate that and you notice what I'm doing here I'm not consolidating it because every time I search this group. I want to look at those individual stats. Let's hit apply Okay, give that a second. That's it done there. So these are all the the, the sections I want to look at every time I log into my groups if I'm you know playing in various events etc now what I want to do is reset all the filters so what I do here is uncheck all uncheck all change that to all games then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this and these groups should if I go back to this I've got it all on here I should be able to go groups the bear 44 Hit that, and they should all load up here. There you go. Et voila. All loaded up. So every time you log in, right, and you want to look at your groups, how you're doing in these different areas. So this is very handy, for example, if you're doing things like tournaments, uh, tournaments here, and sit and goes. You're mixing up between the two, and say you're playing between Hold'em and Omaha. Very useful to get all this information at a glance like that. How good is that? And again, this just shows you the power that SharpScope are giving yourself to play around and set up your own filters and your own groups. I think it's fantastic. So the next subject we're going to talk about is advanced cert, which is this button here. Now there's lots of extra fields here that Shark's got to put in, which gives you so many tools um, to basically play around with. And we're going to use any up here again. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on more options. And this brings up these boxes here, which is versus last average rebuys and rebuy. So I'm sure you're all asking, what does this all mean? Well, some of it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So, for example, the verse is pretty easy. So, if you click on that, you get this option. You get verses and not verses. So, if we're doing some homework, for example, uh, on ourselves versus um, other people, if we wanted to see what our profit was excluding a particular individual, so say you've been taking somebody apart on Triple Eight Poker or, or Stars, wherever it is, uh, and they've altered your profit um, exponentially because you've like, you've taken two, three grand off them, but they've been a a bit of a tuner. They're going to make your stats look a little bit more, should we say, uh, powerful than probably they should be because you've had this one person you've taken advantage of. So if you want to take him out, you put it, you can put it all in there. So very simply, you just put the name of the player in there, do your search, whatever range it is, uh, you know, and you just take him out of your stats and your stats will change accordingly. At the same time, if you uh, want to do it versus a particular individual to see how you've performed against them. So that's very useful in sit and goes, for example. You think, well, all right, I keep bumping into this person. How am I doing against them? Or if you're a heads up, for example, and you're doing homework on a heads up situation, this tool then becomes very, very useful. So if we do a little exercise here with uh, Eddie Kadub, for example, and I've just tested it there so whilst we're on pause. 
So if we look at the, the ones where he's lost the most money, we're looking for one with the count here. So we've got 13 games here for Mutton 3K. So highlight, copy, take that up here, and we say not versus. So if we want to see what is his stats like without this person, because that's his sit and go stats as he stands, 3.5K up. There's the count. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there, ROI. If we take Mutton out where he's lost uh, more uh, money too, and then just go up here and do a uh, search again, Watch this, people. There's the actual formula. You can actually resize the box to see it. So that's a sit and go when we take mutton out. If you take mutton out there, his actual profit goes up quite significantly. His ROI goes up. His ability rating goes up. So mutton actually is bad news for him <laughs> if he's in there. And the count is actually correct. So it does make um, a quite a significant difference. So, for example, if he avoids mutton, he earns obviously a lot more money. And again, the principle applies if you want to um, say not versus and put a player in who's been very, uh, should we say, good for your graph and your profit. Then you can see, well, if I take that, that, that tuner out of my equation, what are my real stats overall, if you know what I'm saying? Moving on to the next section. This is the last one here. So basically, this is last, first, best, worst. So basically, last is your most recent games. So again, pretty self-explanatory. If you want to see what your last run was like, your first, your best, your worst, just play around with it and you can just, you know, look at how you've performed in, in those time brackets and what your worst run is and obviously what your best run is. Now this next box I do like, which is average rebuys, because I actually do quite, uh, you know, I quite enjoy playing the rebuys. Um, now the average rebuys across tournament players is round about two and a half to three. Now the way this works is Sharscope will not know what your average rebuy for that particular tournament is, but it does know the average rebuy for the whole tournament. And what it then does is use that formula for the whole tournament when it looks at your database. So if we come back to Eddie Kadub, who is our uh, guinea pig here, if we look at him, for example, here's his overall stats. If we just use a little example here and said, let's say he has no rebuys at all. His average rebuys is zero, which is obviously not realistic. If we did a search on zero, watch his, what happens to his profit here. His 16K would jump up to 17.8. His ability rating jumps one point to 79. His um, ROI would just go through the roof at 58.3, which is massive. But we know that... Um, Zero uh, average rebuys, it's just not realistic. However, let's just say uh, Eddie Kadub, a um, little bit more sensible, limits himself to four rebuys tops on average across the, his rebuy tournaments. And that's probably a lot more uh, uh, realistic. If we did a search using the average rebuy of four on Eddie Kadub, then look what happens to his profit. Ability rating stays the same. ROI drops, so his profit drops a little bit from 16-odd K down to 14. Average stake, you can, you can basically see it there. And there, there's the little for, for filter for the formula for you to look at. So basically, in summary, if you, if you play a lot of rebuys, this little tool here is very handy for you to basically assess how you're performing in rebuys if you're actually keeping to a specific, um, you know, uh, rule on, on, on your rebuys. Now, last section of this video, we're going to talk about the rate back column here. I'm going to show you how to put this actually into your chart. So watch this. If we go to add other statistics, we're going to roll down here and we're looking for this column here, which is total rate. You see that? I'm going to add that and hit OK. And when we do the search on Eddie Kadub, for example, we'd look at the end of your column, you get this total rig. And that is the rig that Eddie Kadub has generated on PokerStars alone. Tasty. Now, let's just say you're on another site, not like PokerStars, because they've got their own rig system, obviously. So say you're on one of the iPoker networks and you've been able to wrangle a deal with them. And um, let's say, for example, that you, you've got a 20% rig back deal, okay? So what it then does is it recalculates, there you go, there's the filter the formula there in there, and it actually calculates what the difference is in the rake, and you can see it makes quite a significant difference. So again, if you want to get rid of that column, very, very simple. Uh, when you go to the add other statistics, you've got the minus one here. We're looking for total rake. You just do that, hit OK, and there you go. It vanishes that quickly. So, peeps, we've covered an awful lot in this video here. Obviously, I'm conscious of time. Um, don't forget, you get a frequently asked question box at the top here on the Shot Scope site. So, any questions that you're not sure about, want to get it sanity checked and read it over, just click on that. Not a problem. You should be able to get answers to your questions. And again, if you can't get the answer there, by all means, post to me, you know, on my on my site here, on my blog site, or send it to Shot Scope, and they're more than happy to answer your questions.